Take it away, my friend. Welcome. Welcome to another episode of Hustle Culture, guys. Today, I've got my trusty co-host as usual. His name is Carlos Gill. I call him Los. And we're going to be talking hustle, pop culture, sports, everything that pertains to hustle. But we're also really, really pumped because we have an amazing guest. His name is Chris Strubb. We just spent over an hour talking to Story and really engaging with him and the audience. And I can't wait to bring that to you. But before we dive into more of those... I'm going to pass it off to you, Los. Yo, what is happening? Thank you so much, Tyo, for that introduction. Just want to give a shout out to all of our viewers here this morning watching us live on Blab. Also want to give a shout out to everyone that has subscribed to Hustle Culture on iTunes. Thanks to your support, you guys have helped Hustle Culture be one of the most downloaded and new and noteworthy podcasts on iTunes. So thank you so much, guys. Like Tyler said, we've got a great episode in store. We've got Chris Strub that is going to be joining us uh, here in a little bit. We were actually chatting with him leading up to this recording. And uh, you guys are in for a treat. This is a guy who's uh, he's doing big things, has a great heart and a great mission. But you know what, Ty? You mentioned sports. And today, your Patriots go into a very tough matchup against – Oh, it's tomorrow. tomorrow. It's not today. Tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. You got to get it right, son. Tomorrow, Patriots go in to Denver at the Mile House Stadium. A little nervous. Actually, I'm not nervous, but uh, <laughs> you're nervous. But you're yes, nervous. no. That's, but today, my other team. All right, prediction. I, prediction I, of nervous. the game. I'm nervous. <laughs> you're on culture. Uh, prediction of the game. I'm gonna I'm gonna say a 2017 game. Patriots. It's gonna be close. Um, but yes, I'm I'm definitely nervous. Uh, my other team, Manchester United, played today, and we sadly lost. So, uh, but we'll do it now. Patriots. Your team, though, the Miami Dolphins. Uh, they're in the playoffs, no. right? No. They are not in the playoffs this year, but they're already amping up for Super Bowl 51 as we speak. Oh, okay, okay. You know, I, I said that for the audience to know because you always tell me. Yeah, so, you know, I actually, year, I'm man, going you know. with a Panthers-Broncos Super Bowl. Crazy as it might This is the good thing about predictions. Okay. By the time this episode airs on iTunes, we have already known who won the game. But I think Peyton Manning gets to the Super Bowl in his last season, and I think he's going to go out on top as a champion. Look, I, I like Peyton, but I think it's going to be Cam Newton and Tom Brady, and I think it's going to be like the old school versus the new school, and um, it's going to be a good game. Don't, don't get me but, wrong. Um, I want to see know. Cam Newton do the dab in the Super Bowl. All about the dab. Exactly. Do the, do the, do the dab. <laughs> so you know what, man? <laughs> this is hustle culture. All right, so, so. Mm-hmm. So, so okay, besides sports, what have, what has your week been like? I know we always talk about the weekly grind. What have you spent the week doing? How has that gone on? And um, how have I you got, uh, I got to say, moves, bro, man? honestly, we are 23 days into 2016, and I don't remember a period in time ever in which I have been so focused, mm. just so motivated. And mm. we all make these New Year's resolutions. We all say, oh, I'm going to make this year my year. I am – trying to own every single day and dude i gotta say these last 23 days have just they've helped me tremendously and i gotta say focus has been a major key to the success through this early part of the year and for those of you that follow me on snapchat at the carlos gill i talk about this almost on a daily basis i decided to jump off of facebook i started doing this facebook detox about two weeks ago. And the reason why is because I've noticed there's just so much negativity and so many distractions and people out taking shots and uh, other people and promoting themselves that I had to make a conscious decision. If I don't distance myself from seeing negativity and seeing distractions, I'm not going to be able to be at the top of my A game. So I've been going really hard mm. using Snapchat as a medium to build relationships with people. Um, I've been putting a lot of content out on YouTube to try to educate, motivate, and inspire as many people out there. And you know what I do? I've just been keeping my head down, grinding with you know, not only my day job, but also with other projects out there and you know, trying to collaborate and, and work with people like yourself, Tyle, work with people like Saba, who's my co-host on Social 545, and just really try to own this year, man, because – as they say, you only got one chance to be as young as you are today. So I want to make the most of every opportunity and day out there. What about you, bro? 
No, I appreciate that. And you know, I definitely, I definitely was aware of your, of your Facebook detox. I mean, for me, it's been, uh, you know, this year for me is, has been the year of positivity, aff- affirmation and um, gratitude, you know, uh, on Snapchat at, I'm going to do a shameless plug here because you did it at Tyra Roxon, um on Snapchat. I, I've definitely, you know, started each day with, with gratitude. You know, I, um, I've seen a lot of the results that happens when, when you just have that positive mindset um, and you just say, you know, you're going to do something. This is what you're going to do. And even if something bad happens, go to bed in a positive attitude. So I've been being very conscious about that. And uh, I'm also on that mission to read at least 24 books uh, this year. So I'm um, two and a half books in. So definitely get, getting the knowledge in, um, you know, as many of you know, I, I am uh, getting ready to launch a podcast network focused on millennials. So I've been doing a lot of recording uh, of episodes and, and producing essentially. So I've been in the meetings constantly and, and staying up late, but it's, you know what? It's great because like you, I don't think I've ever felt this focused because, um, you know, every day you wake up with that purpose and, you know, and you realize, you realize that the hustle is there and that even if it's a difficult time and it's snowing, you're always going to continue to do work because you feel like you found yeah, your it, mission. Uh, the two most important days in your life. Sorry. Sorry. The two most important days in your life are the day you're born and the day you realize what you were meant for. So uh, that's something that I've actively worked on and I've, I've been going on that speaking tour. No, I, I didn't mean to cut you off. It's all about the energy. Something. And when you surround yourself right. with like-minded people and they cast an energy onto you that's contagious, you're unstoppable. And, and I got to say, Snapchat, and this is not by any means a continuous plug about it, but I <laughs> have been on Snapchat now for the last couple of years. But over the last month alone, my activity has just increased mm. in terms of I'm going on there. I'm putting content. Like I said, jumped off of Facebook. I'm doing the Facebook detox. And through Snapchat, I've been able to develop these awesome one-on-one relationships. And I get my energy from helping others. When people come to me and they say, hey, I need help in how do I do this in social media? How do I up my personal brand? Um, man, just so many people out there motivate and inspire me. And, and I'll share a quick story with you before we bring our guest, Chris Strub, onto the show. I was hanging out at uh, Blab's headquarters last week uh, during the Periscope Summit. They hosted mm-hmm. a after party. And I just got to meet so many people in person. I've met right. here on Blab. I've met them on social media over the last year or so. And just having people walk up to me say, dude, I watch your snaps every day. And it inspires me. And it brings the best out of me. It motivates me. That, it's like reverse engineer inspires me to keep going at it harder. Because, Like you right. said, bro, we all have a purpose. Right. And once you discover what that purpose is, what your meaning is, you're unstoppable. The roadmap has mm-hmm. already been paved. You just got to keep doing the work and put it in. No, absolutely. And then to, before we bring on the guests, you know, like I've always shared with people in previous episodes, ever since I was 10, you know, I was that kid that would run over after watching Nickelodeon and say, mom, I want to watch the Oprah Winfrey show. Right. Cause she was like my biggest role model. I knew like I was 10, 11, I wanted to own a media company. And the reason why I was doing that was because her, her mission, you know, which is always to be the best version of yourself was something that resonated with. I wanted to be able to tell stories that made people see that they could be better pe- versions of themselves. So when, you're talking about reverse engineering. I was thinking that's exactly what I've been doing. So, you know, you study all the, all the greats. So like you watch Oprah Winfrey, you read up all the biography, read up Steve Harvey and people that have done that. And then you understand, like you're saying, there is no overnight success, but there was that consistent hard work and recognition of what their purpose was. And, and, and you know, that bravery to actually take and seize it. There was someone on the comment that said, um, a lot of people are actually afraid of success. And I believe that because... People ask for success, and then they get it, and then a lot of times they don't know what to do with it. So reverse engineering is definitely something that I, I want the listeners to start doing. Pick out those people that you admire. Don't try and copy them, but reverse engineer what they did and try and see how you can apply it to yourself. And I think you're going to see a lot of results, but also – be Absolutely. positive, right, Carlos? You got to be positive. You got to embrace right? the good with the bad. You know, I always believe that you. it's important to celebrate your wins along the way, but it's also important – Mm -hmm. to acknowledge the shortcomings and embrace failures, embrace shortfalls, because that in itself is a valuable teaching opportunity that if you take take the bad and you embrace it, man, you're going to be unstoppable because nothing's going to be able to break you down. I believe everything helps build character along the way. And think of the people you're going to relate to. I mean, I, I did a snap story yesterday on my podcast journey when I was doing my MBA 
and how the numbers started to grow, you know, up until the point. But I remember I was talking specifically about a time when I was so devastated. It was just my mom <laughs> and my brothers listening. And then all of a sudden I got this email from someone who said, I really like this episode. And then that just reminded me of the purpose. And then all of a sudden, you know, the numbers started to get better. And I was saying that to say that there was a time where I wanted to give up. I was like, this is nothing. No one's listening. And then someone reminded me of why I started in the first place. And then all of that just sort of faded away. And it actually just got me creatively thinking of ways to expand. So it's always a great thing to remind yourself what your purpose is. But I think it's always even better to, to, uh, really say, you know what, this is my purpose and I'm going to live it regardless of what positive or negative thing that yeah. happens to me today. Real talk. So, it's very key. Major, Major key, key to success. Key. All right. So we are going to move on and bring our guest on Hustle Culture, Chris Strub, here onto the show. And let me tell you guys, if you are listening right now or if you're watching this here on Blab, you are in for a treat. I actually got to meet Chris through social media. Last year, he is the first person to go to all 50 states and live stream. And I happened to catch him when he was uh, in on his tour in one of the states um, through Meerkat. And this guy, man, he he is what I define as a true hustler, someone that had a mission, a purpose, and we are going to bring him here onto the show to go ahead and share with all of you about what that purpose is. So with that, welcome to Hustle Culture, Chris. Yeah, all right. Thank you guys for having me. Appreciate it. So glad yeah, to be excited here. Excited to have you. So, you know, Carlos is telling me about you. I was, uh, I was asking him, who do you think should be our guest for this week? And he was like, no, oh, man, you got to check out this guy, Chris Crump. Check it out. And I looked at what you did, and it was like, I was like, what? This guy traveled to 50 states last year, all you know, through live streaming. I was like, what? I haven't been to 50 states and I've lived on four different continents. So I was like, I definitely have to, to hear a story. And I started reading your stuff and I was watching your podcast interview um, with, with Steve here, the one you did in the Tesla. And I really identified with the mission that you, you had, which was to help other people, but also you work with nonprofits because that's that's something that's personal to me. I started my my job in nonprofit, so I was really excited to have you on here. And I and I really just wanted to, you to, you know, have a chance to share why you felt like you needed to do that at the beginning of last year. Yeah, and uh, before I get into it, I really want to say thank you so much to both of you guys for having me here on Hustle Culture. Uh, this is definitely one of my favorite podcasts, if not my favorite. And I've I've drawn so much inspiration from listening to so many of your other guests. So thank you guys. Um, you know, I went on my trip last year, uh, like you guys said, uh, 50 states in 100 days, became the first man to live stream in all 50 states. But, uh, you know, like Teo saying, more importantly, uh, was the work that I did with nonprofit organizations uh, all around the country. Um, I traveled from May 15th to August 21st and started in South Carolina, ended up in Asheville, North Carolina. And, you know, People ask me why on every interview and every Q&A that I do, and I try and answer it differently every time. Um, but I really wanted to make as big a, an impact on the world as I possibly could, and I wanted to do it in a positive fashion. Um, I come from a journalism background, and I know that um, we focus so much in journalism on negativity and bad stories, shootings, murders, stabbings, and just catastrophes. And for me, uh, the Team Strub journey uh, really was an opportunity to create good news all around the United States. And that was evident uh, in the local media uh, that I got in many, many states. I did over 35 interviews around the country and was able to use the, that, those platforms, um, a lot of local TV, newspaper, radio, and of course, um, some really great uh, online interviews as well, you know, Andrew Martin, et cetera, um, throughout the summer um, to talk about the great things that are going on around the country and to do it in an exciting and interesting and innovative fashion. So um, when you ask why, I say, why not? You know, I was 29 years old. Uh, this was something that I felt <laughs> capable of doing. Uh, I had a dream. And instead of sitting on that dream and, and taking it with me to the grave, I said, hey, let's go. You know, you don't need permission to go out and do your own thing. And I wasn't going to wait. It was something I wanted to do while in my 20s. Mm -hmm. And so time ran out and there we were. And we did it. So absolutely. You did it. 
Now, now, Los, well, tell me, tell me your first impression of, of Chris when you first when you saw him um, in person, because I know you'd follow him prior. You to know, that so I, I, I want to point out, so Chris actually caught my attention on Twitter at the beginning part of last year, and he did a really good job standing out. I still remember. I want to say your your Twitter photo at the time was at a baseball stadium, and uh, really stood out to me. And I happened to be on Meerkat one day. And I saw Chris at one of the states that he was in. And I was like, wow, this guy actually has a really cool mission. And what really made Chris stand on the radar is as soon as I jumped in, he was like, oh, Carlos Gill's here. And I was like, what? My wife actually was next to me at the time. She's like, did this guy just say your name? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, this is pretty cool. And I was watching <laughs> what he was saying. And immediately I, I got my laptop and I went on to see his website. And I was like, wow, I'm fascinated because – you know what? For as many shots as I've taken throughout my career, I've never put myself out there to go to all 50 states. And we're going to get to how exactly you funded this, Chris, here in a moment because I'm curious to know. But yeah. I was just drawn in by that hustle and that drive and determination because let's face it. If you are going to go tour 50 states in however many days and work with nonprofits, mm. you're not working a regular day job in this process. You're having to fund things like hotel and travel and incidentals and whatnot to go ahead and put others before you. And that in its, in its own right is, is noteworthy. But, you know, when I met Chris last week here in San Francisco the Paris, at the Periscope Summit, I was just like in awe that here I am meeting face to face with the man, the myth, the legend. I even said that on Snapchat. Same yellow T-shirt, same backwards hat. Same passion, enthusiasm, and he's a guy that keeps it real. And uh, I, I think that's what sets people <laughs> apart nowadays. You got yeah. so many people that hide behind the veil of social media and live stream, and you know what they convey is completely different than who they are in person. And I can I can personally attest to the fact that Chris is a hundred percent legit, and that's real talk. Well, all I, all I can do, guys, so and, and I appreciate those kind of words. Through. All I can do is be me. But we were talking in the pre-show a little bit about how. Um, you know, I, I really love listening and I love learning from some of the best in the business. Um, I listen as much as I possibly can to Brian Fanzo, uh, who was the host of Summit Live. And I just draw so much inspiration from that young man. And one thing that you notice from Brian Fanzo is he's always got his backwards hat on, you know, and that's OK. You know, I, I think it's important. It was very important for me to go around the country and especially in meeting with all of these kids to encourage them uh, to be themselves and to embrace who they are. You know, I didn't go around and dress in a shirt and tie and I didn't, you know, I had the long shaggy hair and the beard and everything throughout the trip because it was very important for me to demonstrate to these young people that being yourself is okay. You know, you don't need to fit into a, you know, a certain box. You don't need to fit into a certain mold. Just be yourself and embrace yourself. And if you, in, in being yourself, can help others and encourage others and inspire others, then that's incredible. You know, and for me, that's, that's what it was all about, wearing the same shirt all the time, wearing the same hat all the time. It really demonstrated from beginning to end that no matter what happened, I was going to be true to myself. And so when I got to Summit Live last weekend, I had packed up, you know, my nice shirts and my, you know, everything, all the nice shoes and everything. And I said, you know what? No, I've got to be me. I've got to be true to myself. If they're giving, giving me a stage, if they're giving me a platform, I'm going to go up and I'm going to represent the person that I have always been, which is me, you know, for better or for worse. And people will pick it apart and, and criticize whatever, but that's who I am. You know, and Teo always says, use your difference to make a difference. Well, I'm different. I don't fit into the box, but that's okay. Yeah. Because I'm here on hustle culture to tell my story yeah. and to tell, you know, hopefully inspire others to to live their hustle in their own fashion. Well, that's great that you say you're here to tell your story because I'm sure at the beginning of last year when you decided to tell your story in 50 states, some people must have looked at you and said, You're crazy. Chris, you are unbelievably insane. What are you gonna do? Where are you getting the money mm -hmm. from? How are you going to do it? How are you going to execute it? And your response to them was... <laughs> My response to them was, uh, would you like to sponsor me? Um, I really... <laughs> you know, I had a fantastic idea, and I really thought that um, it would come together in a form of some sort of sponsorship. Um, you know, I, I dreamed of connecting with the right people. And again, we talked in the pre-show. If you, if you missed it, 
um, off the record, sorry, but you got to tune in on Blab to get the whole story, guys. Um, but, you know, I, I'm very good at connecting. I thought I had an in with, with quite a few people, especially at a hotel chain would have really made the trip a lot easier. Uh, we can dive into it, but uh, spoiler alert, I did sleep in my car 14 times during the trip. Wow. Um, and so, you know, that that's hustle. That's hustle to me. When you hold up your phone and you're on Meerkat, not because you want to show off a pretty sunset, but because you're going to sleep by yourself in the backseat of your Honda in, in North Dakota, and you just want someone to talk to and to say hi to. That was hustle, okay? But for me, to be out there um, without mm. a sponsor was difficult, but, but Tayo, I was not going to let not having a sponsor stop me from achieving my dream. Mm -hmm. And... I knew that there would be consequences. Right. I knew that it would be difficult. I knew that what I wanted to do without a sponsor would be really tough. But I also knew in my heart that by going out and following my dream, no matter what, that it would pay off for me in the long run. And it certainly has emotionally, spiritually, that I know in my head. Tayo, I used to have nightmares back in the, the late 2000s. I, I couldn't fall asleep because... I was afraid mm. I was going to die someday and not have accomplished something and, and people wouldn't remember me for who I really was. And now when I go to sleep, that doesn't happen anymore. Mm. Now I can sleep soundly. And now I know that even if I walked off the face of this earth tomorrow and God, I hope I don't, but I know that I set a goal. I had a dream and I followed it to its conclusion. And I did what I set out. I was going to do. And not many people can say that, you know, that, I wanted to accomplish something. Mm. I said, I'm going to go out there. I'm going to help as many people as I possibly can. And I'm going to ask as many people as I can to, to help and support and share the story. And I did it. And that sense of accomplishment, there is nothing, there is no amount of money. There is no amount of sponsorship. There's no amount of Twitter followers or Snapchat views or anything that will ever equal that feeling of getting back into South Carolina and saying, you know what? I set a goal and I accomplished it. And for me, no matter what happens from here on out, I did it. And that is a very, very special feeling that not a lot of people can, can say that they have. Chris, it's, for those that are listening uh, to Hustle Culture right now, talk to our listeners about what exactly you were doing with each nonprofit along yeah. the way. So what Great. type of work were you doing with them specifically? Great. Great question. So. Um, you know, I planned out the trip uh, in the beginning of 2015, did a lot of groundwork, which we'll talk about in a little bit as well. But once I got out on the road, um, it wasn't just stopping in, give a high five and then keep driving. Um, I actually produced a whole lot of video content um, with each organization, um, starting at the Carolina Youth Development Center in Charleston, South Carolina. And so um, Snapchat is all the rage these days, right? Everyone listening to this podcast is like, oh, what's your Snapchat? How, what are the Snapchat tips, right? I use Snapchat to conduct um, quick interviews with each organization, oftentimes just with the directors, but in some, in many cases with the kids as well. And so I would hold up my phone and I would ask a question on Snapchat, you know, up to 10 seconds, you know, hey, introduce yourself, tell us what you do. And then I would hand the phone to the staff member or to the kid and I would allow them to record their 10 second answer. And, you know, we trade the phone back and forth. And then at the end of the day, I would download all of that content and I would stitch it together into a 90 second to two minute long video um, that would concisely and quickly tell the story of the organization in whatever fashion they wanted to. Um, after that, after that interview, I also conducted an interview uh, on my GoPro. So we would, we would set up a little uh, recording station, you know, with my, my uh, quick pod and a tripod and everything, and mm -hmm. just do a quick question and answer session, 10 to 12 minutes. And we would record the story of their organization. Um, sometimes we would live stream that as well. So I would set up my phone and either Meerkat it or Periscope it. And so people could tune in live and ask questions as we were going. And so by doing that, um, and then of course I would hang out and volunteer and, and often work with the kids or speak with the kids or do whatever task they wanted me mm -hmm. to. So um, by creating that video content at each organization, I've created this incredible network mm -hmm. of um, stories that can be told over and over and over again. Um, mm -hmm. it, it's not just um, in the book and it's not just, you know, the pictures that are on my Instagram, but you can actually go back and you can see me sit down 
with the yeah. executive director of Opportunity Village. You can see me sit down with all of the coordinators gotcha. and the volunteers. And it was really powerful to create so much lasting content that people can really relive um, forever. Absolutely. Well, yeah. Chris, I've got this question for you. So this is something that's been popping in my mind um, since you've been talking. It's a two part question. What was the Easy. lowest point <laughs> during your trip? And uh, got that one. OK. <laughs> and the second one is, is um, the second one is um, where who did you learn the most from during your trip? Because you yeah. talked a lot. OK. Uh, lot cool uh, part, part one, the lowest point of the trip was easily uh, Las Cruces, New Mexico. Um, I believe it was state number 13. And uh, I was crumbling. I was very, very far away from home. You know, that drive across western Texas is really difficult. Um, you know, you get to New Mexico and it's hot. It's the mm -hmm. middle of the summer. And I just broke down. I mean, I, I, my car didn't break down, but I physically just crumbled. Mm -hmm. um, I was sitting on the trunk of my car um, at a hotel that I, I really couldn't afford. And uh, I was crying. I was, I was in my car and I was, I was just... I was melting, you know, literally, physically, just, it was awful. Um, and what did I do? I, I picked up my phone and I turned on Meerkat and I started streaming. And, um, you know, the, the response was just overwhelming. Um, people just coming on and, and recognizing that emotion and that, that compassion that you feel uh, from your community is unbelievable. And to do this trip in 2015, we're at a press of a button I could speak with and, and chat back and forth with 20, 30, 40 people at a time um, was such a powerful thing. And there, I'm going to tell you guys, there is no way I could have made it through this trip without the live streaming community, without specifically the Meerkat community most of the way, um, to be able to press a button and you know, people are DMing me. They're, they're telling me, call me. I can help you. I can, what can I do to help? You know, how can we, you know, your story, mm. Chris, is so inspiring to us. You have to keep going. You, you can't stop now. And so that was, that was easily the low point of the trip. And it was a huge turning point for me to know that what I was doing was bigger than myself. What I was doing, what I had set out to do mm. was more than just you know, the amount of debt that I was accruing. And I know Teo tells the story of how he was 20 grand in debt at this point last year. Well, <laughs> uh, sounds familiar. So <laughs> how much, you know, how much, if you don't mind me asking, how much yeah. did the, uh, trip set you back, Chris? Uh, it was about, it was about 12 grand. I would say, you know, all things considered, um, I did get some donations, uh, throughout the trip, which were fantastic. Um, I also had a, a lot of the cities hooked me up with hotel rooms, which was really special. Um, but a lot of them didn't. So, you know, thus the sleeping in the car aspect of it. And honestly, I was still, I was still not on That's... solid financial ground after the 2014 trip. Um, I was still trying to work my way up after that trip. So, uh, I am in a, a good bit of debt now, but, um, we're working at it. We're trying, but like I said, the emotions that you feel when you set out to accomplish a goal. There is not, there is seriously not a dollar value that you can put on that. And I, I know that's a crazy concept for people to wrap their heads around, but for me to be in debt temporarily, and I know that 2016 is going to be the year that this all turns around for me. We'll talk about that hopefully too. Mm -hmm. But for me, this was an investment. This was an investment in my future. This was like going to grad school and getting an MBA in world travel. I mean, that's how I really look at it is that <laughs> I have an experience. I have a degree in doing this now with live streaming, with Snapchat, with Instagram, with all of these technologies that to me is more valuable than any college course that I could consider taking. And the, when you look at it that way, when you contrast it with, yeah. you know, the amount of money that people spend to go to grad school, I got that real life hustle experience. To me, that's better than any graduate degree that I could find. So I, I'm so, I'm, I'm so proud of what I've yeah. done and so thrilled to have done it no matter what the cost, you know? Gotcha. Gotcha. And, and, you know, you went to the school of hard knocks and basically, you know, that's, that's real life right there. You were, um, you're talking about, you learned a lot, but who did you learn from the most? And what was that moment where you felt like this person has given me this nugget of wisdom that I feel like I can, can be my takeaway. Oh my from gosh. I mean, there's, there's two great ways to answer that too. I mean, obviously my, my in real life experience was with all of the nonprofits and I could tick off dozens of people who are brilliant and, and 
offered some great expertise about the world of nonprofits around the United States. But we're simultaneously talking about uh, a world where people could tune in live and help me and contribute to my personal growth and how I was achieving the goals every day. So I met some really incredible people. I know Carlos was one of them who tuned in on Meerkat. But you know, when I talk about meeting people, it was both in real life every day and it was online. So you know, when, when people like Jeff Goldberg tune in in the middle of the trip, and now I'm in touch with someone who's nominated for Periscoper of the Year because of his undying support of the community and his incredible skill and his background. When people like Brian Fanzo tune in when I'm in Pittsburgh and I'm pulling out weeds with Steve Sassman at Frick Park, and now Brian Fanzo says, oh my goodness, this is an incredible story. How can I help you tell it? Um, total contrast between everything that I learned about the nonprofit industry and the nonprofit world around the country you know, to, to, and I can name a couple of the names, you know, like um, Ed Guthrie, the CEO of Opportunity Village, and Liz Ellerson, the new executive director of Eat South in Montgomery, Alabama, uh, you know, Nicole Burdick in Rapid City, South Dakota. So many of these stories are out there and, and so many brilliant people that I met um, along the way. But simultaneously to meet up and, and to network with people like Neve Drawer and people like Steve Isaacs and people like you know, um, you know Jeff Goldberg and, and Brian Fanzo and, and all of these major live streaming personalities who helped me be able to tell the stories more creatively and in a more interesting fashion um, and in a more powerful fashion um, as the trip went on. So I got better at live streaming and using social media along the trip and got better um, at learning about what the, the world of nonprofits and the world of volunteerism is about, uh, you know, all around the country. It was a crazy trip. <laughs> hey, let, let, let me just let me just weigh in. Life in general <laughs> is a crazy trip. And we idolize so many successful people. Zuckerberg, Gary Vaynerchuk, Bill Gates, you name them. But what most people don't do is take a step back and think, how did they get there? They all started at the bottom just like we all start at the bottom and they all had their own rise to success. And that's what, that's what we try to do here on Hustle Culture is spotlight folks such as yourself, Chris, that can talk about their climb because we're always climbing. And you know what's great about this is that, well, yeah, there were some obstacles, there were some shortfalls financially, you learned something from this experience. And you know what, I was there too, back in 2009, 2010, when I was going through my struggles with growing jobs direct USA. I didn't have venture capital money to back me up. Everything was self-funded. People said to me all the time, you're crazy, dude. You're touring around hosting these pink slip parties, trying to help people find jobs. Find yourself a job, feed your family, put yourself first. And you know what, dude? I don't, I don't look back on that experience and regret anything. While I lost dollars and cents, there's so much more that I gained from it, which I'm sure you, you can relate to. Chris, I know Tyler, you can too. You know, which leads me to, to my next question, man. I, I got to know straight up. Were there times mm -hmm. during this journey, Chris, that you thought about giving up? Las Cruces, New Mexico. I literally said on live stream, guys, I'm setting up this T-shirt campaign or whatever it was. And I posted an Instagram photo and I said, if I don't raise this amount of money by the time I get to Las Vegas, which was um, several states away, I think four or five states through, uh, I'm just going to keep going east from Las Vegas and say, screw it. Um, so yeah, absolutely. I thought about giving up, um, in New Mexico and then I, I woke up the next day and I said, no, like, this is what I've, uh, you know, this is, this is my life. This is how I'm going to be defined is my ability to persevere. This is how I'm going to define my life. And what am I going to do? Mm. What, what do I have to go home to? You know what I mean? I had my apartment, but I didn't have a job. Mm -hmm. I, as we talked about in the pre-show, I don't have a girlfriend or a wife or anything. So I didn't really have my own family to go home to, although I'm endlessly grateful to my parents, my grandmother, my sister, my extended family for always, always, always supporting me. And I always know that I can go home to my mom and dad, which is a big reason why I was able to go on this trip in the first place was their emotional support. But uh, once I got west of New Mexico, there was no stopping me. There was nothing that was going to happen. Car accident, nothing. Nothing in the world was going to stop me from completing this journey. And thankfully, 
There were no car accidents. There were no catastrophes. There were no weather tornadoes or anything like that. But I'm telling you, if anything like that did happen, I would have walked. I would have had KP Kelly drive me on a tricycle. Whatever it would have taken to those remaining states, I would have been there. <laughs> yeah. we, all have, we all have those turning points in our life. And uh, you know that's why I like to know from folks such as yourself – what their turning point was what was that pivotal moment where they decide you know what I, I need to just keep pushing through so, you know for me just to be just to be you know transparent it was watching the movie the pursuit of happiness one night you know i was literally down to you know having no money in my bank account was driving all around jacksonville florida seeing what charity would help me pay my utility bill because my daughter you know was a baby at the time and i had literally no money to my name and i saw this movie pursuit of happiness the scene where uh will smith is in the uh, subway station with his uh with his child and literally he was homeless and i was like man i, I mean in fact i'm getting goosebumps even thinking about it that was that moment where i was like you know what i gotta just keep pushing forward because my family's depending on me and i cannot let them down and uh dude you know we all go there's moments tile for you when you were in in, in school you know, was there a moment that you just thought, you know, I, I can't do this anymore? Did we lose Tile? Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll keep going, Chris. So, you know what, man? Great hearing your story. So, as we look beyond 2015, the tour that you did, yeah, what is next for Chris Strub in his journey? That's a great question, Carlos. Um, I have an ultimate dream of bringing as many uh, of these great stories into the live streaming world as possible. And uh, for me, um, I see an end game of possibly working at Periscope. You know, I would love to uh, move to San Francisco. I hear there's some great barbers out there and plenty of Fetty Wap. So uh, Carlos and I would certainly become good friends if uh, we lived Absolutely. a little bit closer. Um, you know, but maybe that's not this week, maybe that's not this month, or maybe that's not even this year. Um, you know, I think there, you know, life is a long road. Um, and so, you know, saying, hey, I want to do this. And if it doesn't work out, that's that's not how my life goes. So I would love to find a job in 2016 that allows me to continue uh, to tell stories um, of people who um, could use our help because I do feel like uh, there's an opportunity there to set an example um, for the country and for the world um, through a specific organization that I might work for. So, um, you know, I've done a lot of work with um, places like Big Brothers Big Sisters, uh, like the Boys and Girls Club, like the YMCA, and um, like Opportunity Village in Las Vegas. Right. And uh, I could certainly see myself um, moving into a position at one of those places mm -hmm. um, in the future where. Uh, my role is to uh, be a storyteller and to help an organization embrace uh, live streaming, Snapchat, and even other social mediums um, to tell their stories in a more interactive and engaging fashion uh, to to carry the banner for them um, in 2016. And I see Chocolate Johnny's here, so I just want to acknowledge him real quick. But um, you know, in 2016, I think that there is a tremendous opportunity uh, to use live streaming for social good and to tell the stories of nonprofits, uh, whatever iteration that might uh, come by, whether it's working for a specific organization or you know, a big dream of joining Periscope, which would only allow me more of an opportunity to encourage more organizations to tell their stories. Um, you know, those are some of my goals for 2016. Okay, okay. Uh, um, Chris, I have this question. So you, I don't know if you know of my background, but I, I grew up in several countries, right? Sure. And one of the things that always happened was you're always embedded in a different culture. And my question to you, as you were traveling, um, did you have any culture shock moment? I personally, and if I you did, did not uh, have how any did culture you get shock moment at all. Um, if you look at the, the photos from the trip, or you look back at some mm -hmm. of the videos from the trip, um, you know, you notice that I was with uh, kids of all different yeah. um, races, religions, backgrounds, um, people, kids that only spoke Spanish, um, the kids up in you know the far corners of the country. Um, mm -hmm. But I noticed consistently that the kids don't have any of the 
existing issues that that many of the adults have. You know, when you walk in and you want to hang out uh, and and help kids and be there to support them right. and work with them, they don't care what color you are or what race you are or what gender you are. And a lot of people texted me and said, "Wow, right. this trip really opened my eyes to the fact that." kids everywhere are really the same and so you know for me the, the culture of being in alaska mm. and having some awesome salmon or uh being in hawaii you know and and having an ahi poke salad uh that was shocking to me because it was delicious but um you know i really was never uncomfortable i was never uh really bothered by any of the people that i met and everyone was so overwhelmingly friendly and and nice and hospitable um, that it was really a great way to show that despite what people might think of other regions in the country, um, it's really not like that at all. We're all the same inside, you know, especially when we're young, you know, and to be able to, to no, bring no. that happiness, that pride and that joy to kids all around the country um, was something that was really special and really moving to me um, to even get some of the kids to communicate with one another. You know, some of the kids in Texas, you know, I was showing them drawings that were made, that yeah. were drawn in South Carolina. And so when I would go from state to state, I would ask the kids to draw a map of the United States. And we did that all across the country. And it was interesting to see how they thought of the U.S. But the kids loved communicating with one another, you know, from across the U.S. And I think it's it's a really strong testament for the, the positive future of our country that we're moving in the right direction. You know, our kids are in good hands with these organizations, and I love spotlighting them. No matter what state you were in, you could always see that strength and that positivity um, that we don't often always embrace as adults. You, you know, Carlos, the, you know, this is this is I love this particular interview because this is particularly what I believe in when I say use your difference to make a difference. But I can see so many paths here for you, Chris, in the sense that you can use live streaming to show the world how positive it can be, one, especially in the climate that exists today. You can use live streaming to help uh, businesses and nonprofits tell the stories that are not out there in mediums that are consumed mostly by millennials and a younger generation, which in turn helps all these leaders become better leaders because they don't make the same mistakes as previous generations. And I see such a huge opportunity for you to do that because you've been that ambassador. You've got the credibility. You've got the videos. And I guess this is not a challenge or anything. But I'm just curious as to the next steps for you because I can imagine you've come out of that trip. It's been hard. It's been good. It's been rewarding. But how do you plan to amplify that? You know, what, what, and what are your current struggles with with realizing that you're big, that you actually have a bigger thin um, on your hands here, something that's so much bigger, think, than you, uh, bigger than the United States. That's a great question. Um, you know, my current pain point is financial. You know, I think, you know, as I make the comparison to uh, developing an MBA mm -hmm. in world travel, I probably should have maybe got my MBA in, in business first um, to figure out how I could have funded all of this as I went instead of, you know, doing it all and figuring it all out afterwards. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I think as I look ahead to 2016, it's important for me to remember that I do now represent um, many of these organizations, whether they like mm. it or not, or whether they know it or not. You know, when I take the stage at Summit Live, I'm really representing right. all of these kids and all of these organizations. And so for me to succeed is for all of these organizations to succeed. For me to, to sell more books is to tell the story of, you know, Big Brothers, Big Sisters in Peoria and to tell the, the story of the Best Friends Mentoring Program in North mm -hmm. Dakota. And I it's a struggle every day. It, it, it's not simple and easy, but I need to remember, you know, that when I'm asked to be on a podcast or I'm asked to speak at Summit Live, I need to speak with confidence and and ask with confidence. Like Carlos keeps reminding me, like, you know, sometimes you have to activate your network. Mm -hmm. I need to work on that. You know, not everything is perfect and, you know, yeah. the hustle isn't always flawless. Yeah. And so I've developed this fantastic network, I, you know, the two mm -hmm. of you guys in, in here alone and, and Chocolate Johnny and Sandra Centorino and KP Kelly, like there are so many people here, even in this blab room right at this very moment who want to help. And uh, for me, the beginning of 2016 mm -hmm. is figuring out some of the best ways for me uh, to do that. So uh, I'm working on it. Um, like I said, I would love to find a platform at a maybe a, a, a big local or even a national organization to keep telling their stories. And what I would love to do is continue to set the example 
for nonprofits around the world and say, this is how live streaming can benefit you. We started using live streaming in February 2016 when I started, and all of a sudden, volunteerism is up. You know, donations are up. The profile, we've been in the news more because of what, what we're doing with live streaming. Mm -hmm. If I can show measurable results for an organization, then we're going to demonstrate to the entire sector and to the entire world that Periscope and live streaming is making the world a better place. Absolutely. Chris, I... Los, no see, see, I'm going to... Sorry, Carlos, just, uh, I want to do something that we've never done before. So this is, I want to appeal like to the to hustle culture community, you know, whoever's listening on iTunes was listening now. If you know of organizations that could benefit from what, you know, Chris has done, if you know of, of people who would benefit from having their story out there, you've got a guy here who's done that, you know, for a whole year across 50 states and who can actually be a benefit. And I, 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 I'm so passionate about this because I believe this is a real opportunity for you to do it so effectively. So if anyone listening out there has connections or ties to people, organizations that need the story out there, whether it's volunteerism or just telling uh, stories into, in ways that they can make their, themselves a better, uh, better brand, just, you know, hit Chris Straub up and we're going to leave his email and he's going to say it at the end of the no, show. No, no, well. Tayo, so, it's, it's all good. Actually, I was going to go along the same lines. You know, Chris, I'm going to put you here on the spot. I actually asked you this question in the pre-show, but I'm going to ask you here on the recording for anyone out there in the hustle culture community who is either watching us right now live on Blab or listening to us on iTunes, how can they help you? The best way to help me right now is to go to teamstrub.com and uh, check out my book, uh, 50 States, 100 Days. The book is available now at teamstrub.com. Uh, buy it, read it, leave a review, tell your friends. Call your mom, call your dad, tell them to get it too. Uh, because for me, for Chris Strub, my story is representative of all of the stories that are locked away in that book. And you know, if I can raise the profile of the book, I can raise the profile of all the nonprofit organizations out there, and I can simultaneously raise my, my profile um, in this, this world um, to get out there. Um, I also wanted to clarify what, what Tayo said, because I get a lot of, um, I get a lot of, you know, Twitter DMs and Snapchats and everything. Uh, Chris, can you help me with this? We'd love for you to work with this cause. I am looking, Carlos, for stability. Mm -hmm. I am in 2016. I am looking for a position where I can work and I can be stable, where I can make enough money to feed my family. I can get health insurance. I can live in an apartment that's much nicer than this one where I don't want to spin the camera around to show you uh, how s quite small my living quarters are. But I would love to, as we also talked about in the pre-show, settle down and start a family, you know, meet someone and have kids of my own and do all of those fantastic things. And it's very difficult for me to do that in a volatile fashion where I'm working with a hundred different projects. I would like a job, you know, that brings me to sit next to an executive director at a major organization that says, this man is going to help us mm -hmm. tell our story. This man is going to empower and energize this organization to really embrace this live streaming community, to, to, as you talk about, activate our network. And it's very easy to activate your network when you have an incredible story to tell, like the Boys and Girls Club, like Big Brothers, Big Sisters, like Oppor Opportunity Village in Las Vegas, or even if it's a role at Periscope where we're able to empower all of those organizations through what we're doing from a corporate level to get involved and to identify their Chris Jobs, to identify their storyteller, as Malia would say, Identify the storyteller in your organization, get out there and tell your own story. And I feel like what I have created through the Team Strub journey is this platform where I can inspire others to tell their stories. Yep. And I'm looking for a full-time, well-paying role that allows me to step in and do that for an organization that really understands and appreciates what is possible in 2016. Excellent. That's real talk. The website right. is teamstrub.com. That is S T R U B for strub. And I know asking for help sometimes is the hardest thing that we all face, but you know what? That's what hustle culture is all about. It's about spotlighting stories like our guest here in the show, Chris, and you know, Help is always needed. So if anyone out there knows of an opportunity, at a very minimum, check this guy out. Follow him on Twitter. Link up with him on Snapchat. Go to his website. Buy the book. And I assure you guys, 
that there has to be someone out there that's got an inroads with an opportunity for Chris. Chris, my man, before we jump off of this episode of Hustle Culture, I've got to know you and you've talked about family. You've talked about finding a companion, finding a wife, finding someone that's going to travel with you on your next journey. Let's go ahead and talk about that for a second. Yeah. I mean, we, we talked in the, the pre-show <laughs> about priorities and about hustle and, you know, Carlos and Tayo are perfect examples of hustle, hustle, hustle. If you follow these guys on Snapchat, uh, which I'm sure you do, if you're listening on, on iTunes, um, it's all about the hustle. But for me, um, life is deeper than just hustle. Life is deeper than just a job. Um, life is, is about family. And, you know, for me, uh, at, the age that I'm at and the, the stage that I'm at in my life, um, quite honestly, I would love to to find someone, you know, who uh, can run with me and who can appreciate and understand the hustle, mm-hmm. you know, and, and who wants to work just as hard as I do, um, you know, and who recognizes and appreciates, um, you know, the value of, you know, the community that's out there and understands, uh, you know, that life is about family. And so, um, you know, for me, that's, that's been part of my struggle recently is, yeah, I would love to travel some more. I would love to go back out on the road. Um, but I would also love to provide for someone. And with all the great kids, um, that I met last summer, uh, I'm at a stage in my life where I would love to have kids myself. I'm sure my parents would love that too, you know? So, um, it, this is as real as it gets, Carlos, you always talk about real talk. I mean, this is really real talk, you know, that, um, you know, I honestly believe, and I think there's a lot more to be said about how the live streaming community is going to continue to change lives in 2016. And I think that by being introduced to the whole world of uh, live streaming and Snapchatters and everyone out there, that uh, just like there's bound to be a job for me out there, I'm, I'm sure there's bound to be someone uh, who wants to to run with me and uh, you know em- embrace this passion um, for a very long time. All right. Well, we we just want to thank you for coming on um, because your story has been incredible. Uh, We've enjoyed having you on and we are going to do our best as a hustle culture community to get your story out there, get the word out there, because you're the exact definition of what I like to say, uh, someone who's using this difference to make a difference. So we'll share, we'll tweet, we'll we'll buy, we'll rally and, um, you know, we'll we'll remain Chris Strub strong. So we just want to thank you on. Uh, thank you for coming. And I don't know if you have any parting words, Carlos, but um, this has been a great way to spend a snowed in day. Yeah, I just want to echo what uh, what Tyo said, Chris. Thank you so much for coming on to onto Hustle Culture. You are an inspiration, my man. And, you know, keep keep breaking down those barriers. Keep doing good work for others because you know what? In the long run, it's going to come back and pay itself for you. Thank you so much, guys. I, I just want to quickly say Amen. thank you to everyone who, who was watching live on Blab as well. If you're listening on iTunes, uh, this is really a great opportunity to tune in on Blab when these guys are recording and participate and, and watch and see how this great podcast is made. They, they do a whole lot of work um, every week, um, Carlos and Teo, and, and then, of course, Ka- Carlos and Saba on Social 545 is another one of my favorites. I do want to say thank you again to everyone in the live streaming communities uh, that supported me all summer long and especially since the summer ended um, and to everyone who has made a contribution to any of my Indiegogo campaigns, especially everyone who has bought the book and left a review on Amazon. It really, when I say it means the world to me, it literally does um, because my story right now is all that I have and I am eternally grateful to Tayo and Carlos for giving me a platform on this incredible podcast um, to be able to tell it. So thank you guys very much. I, I really appreciate the great work that you guys do and all of your kind words, um, you know, as, as we come to a close. All right, my man. Thanks so much for coming on Hustle thank Culture, you so Chris. Much. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate you. All right. Um, Los, we've got four minutes left here, but I know you and I have one, one spotlight that we're going to give it to and i'm just going to start by giving you clues and you close it they don't want us to acknowledge this guy because of the major keys he drops i mean they don't want us to succeed we're here so, but we're here what's his name we're here Who doing it on hustle, hustle culture all, hustle all day hustle? every day Who is it? and that is the man dj khaled yeah we the best we the best <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> so uh, why why are we acknowledging him as a hustler spotlight? Why are we saying that? Well, this guy well I was gonna say I, I got a hustler that I want to spotlight. spotlight uh, I'm a hustler. And they just joined us here in the room, but I want to say DJ Khaled is probably the person that has inspired me on this grind <laughs> over the last 23 days of 2016. <laughs> is crazy when I think about it. Like, Isn't that honestly, crazy dude, that's a if crazy DJ thing Khaled to say, was keynoting a conference, I will fly my butt to hear DJ Khaled speak <laughs> in person. That's real talk. I'm going to say this for anyone listening to Hustle no, no, Culture right I've, now. I've if seen you want to be inspired, if you're like at that point where you're like, man, things aren't going right. You know, I don't know where my next check's going to come from. I don't know where, you know, how I'm going to evolve this idea. Follow DJ Khaled 305 on Snapchat. I guarantee you. Watch this dude for a day, and your outlook will just completely change on everything. Hey, well, there you go. That's a that's a hustle spotlight. I wanted to give a special shout out because um, uh, Carlos <laughs> is the one that got me on Snapchat, and now I can't get away from it. <laughs> but DJ Khaled has amplified Carlos' Snapchat, so by extension, I'm inspired by the guy. So, thank you all for for coming on the show. But as we close, this is what I want you guys to say. Everywhere you are in the world, no matter what you're doing, remember that you can use your difference to make a difference. So go out, step in the mirror, embrace yourself. So before we wrap up this show, I actually want to give a shout out to my Uh, hustler spotlight for this week. And that's none other than my co-host on Social 545, Miss Saba Sadigi. And let me tell you something, guys. If y'all haven't taken notice yet of who Saba is, start paying attention I've been working very closely with Saba for about four or five months now. We've got a podcast that we host on a weekly basis. There's a lot that's happening behind the scenes. And she just landed a major speaking opportunity that she announces on our upcoming episode of Social 545. So make sure that you tune into that. But this girl is crushing it, and I have bear witness to it each step of the way over the last year. So again, Saba, she gets my nod for this week's Hustler Spotlight. Boom. Well, if that isn't a te- if that isn't a tease, I don't know what else is. Tune in. So it's your 545 and then get in the details. So yeah, no, um, just want to say close, thank close you to all us. of our viewers here this morning on Blab. If you're listening to us on the podcast on iTunes, do us a favor, leave a review. We love to hear feedback from our community. Yeah, like Kyle said, subscribe. And you know what, guys? You are the reason why we keep coming back each and every week. So thank you so much for the love and the support. And we'll be back next week with another episode of Hustle Culture. Bam. Pow. Peace. (laughs) Peace.